know your dream, your your desires, your your uh, uh, expectations. You got to have identity on what it is that you want from God in order to identify when Satan is trying to plant something that's just not right, just not in order. Because what makes it not right is that it's not going where you want to go in God. Amen. Amen. It's not taking you to the place where God has planned for you and you recognize that it's deviating slightly. Satan is so good that he's going to deviate just a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right to take you off the straight path that God. It won't be a whole lot of stuff because some of us really got our eyes open. We're really Amen. watching. Amen. Amen. And he knows that. And then some of us are just buck wild and loose. Amen? Amen. Tell the truth. So how has the devil masqueraded as light in your life mm -hmm. and led you astray? Amen. Come on. You have to ask these questions. But while we're going into this path that we're committing ourselves to this walk in God and to this lifestyle that God has purposed for us, we have to ask ourselves things because Satan is not going to stand right in front of you and tell you I'm saved. Amen. How do you try the spirit? You got to recognize that the spirit might not be what it said it would be. Amen? Amen. So, how stressed are you right now? Hmm? What is causing stress in your life right now? Amen. Amen. How are you dealing with it? Amen. These are questions that help us identify with whose God do we serve? Amen. Ooh, God. And what God do we serve? Amen. Amen. How do trouble in your life affect your walk with God? When things are not going quite like you want it to go and it's not as comfortable and it's not as good and it's more challenging to you, to your commitment and to the words that you gave to God, come on now, how does the trouble that presents itself in your life affect your walk with God? How does, does it make you hesitate? Does it make you pause? Does it make you stop? Does it make you turn? Does it make you question? Am I going the right way? Am I in the right God? Am I doing the right thing? Am I truly committed? Come on, does it make Amen. you question who you are? But more important, who God is. God is. Amen. Amen. God is. What role does the Bible play in your key decisions in life? We have to ask these questions. I ran across these questions and I, I just had to include them this morning because it makes us pause in our circumstances. It makes us pause in our living. It makes us pause in our decision making when we ask questions to ourselves. Amen. Amen. Because the one that's really in the battle is you. So you can ask me questions all day, Brother Michael. Amen. My answers might not be the ones that you need. So who do you have to ask the questions to? You have to ask yourself questions. Don't let people tell you when you get an answer that you crazy, you insane. No. What if your answer came from God? Amen. Amen. But that requires another phase. Amen. Knowing the voice of the Lord, knowing the Spirit of God, knowing and understanding His application in your life. Amen. Amen? Knowing. What role does prayer play in our lives, in our troubles, in our strife, in our confusion? What, what is the role that these circumstances in God play with our decision making? And what about the counsel of trusted Christian friends? What kind of role they play in your life? People that you befriended, that you know have a walk in God. Let me tell you something. That talking in a conversation on yesterday just dropped off. A nugget just dropped off on my table. The guy said that in my country, we have a lot of diamonds. But the true value of the diamond could never really be told except for by the diamond merchant. The one that's been trained to identify with the value and the cost related to the value of a diamond. Amen. Amen. Now, for a minute, that kind of just went over my head. But a true diamond cannot really be evaluated by anybody. 
It has to be someone that's been trained to look at it, to see it. Now, anyone can go out and dig it up. Amen. But everybody cannot put it value on it. Amen. Pure gold comes in the same things. But pure gold, impure gold, and even fool gold, all of it look alike. Amen. All of it look just alike real gold. Amen? Amen. But the only thing about it, only a trained eye can tell you the real value of the gold. Amen. 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 So why don't we use that scenario to walk into our relationship with God? Amen. In our evaluation with our relationship with God. You can have the truth. Or you can have the word, you can have a word, and you can have some words. But what determines the real word that speaks into your life? What determines the real God that guides you in your life? Amen? Amen. Turn your Bibles to 1 John 4 chapter. scriptures to help us understand. First John 4th chapter began, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. What does scripture say? Believe not every spirit, now, a spirit is not a spirit is not this physical thing that, that covers over our body, right? A spirit is shown to man in what way? By your actions, by your deeds, by your work, by your words, by your attitude, by your behavior. Come on, somebody. Not by your, just your past, but it's also shown to you in your presence. Come on. As well as where you're going. Amen? Judge the spirit by the spirit. Try that spirit. Don't just accept it for what it says. You have to really weigh it in the balance to make certain that it is what is presented to you that it said it was. Why? Because so many false prophets, so many false teachers, so many and false teachers don't necessarily mean they're not going out there telling you some truth. I mean, they're not telling you the truth. Amen? And there's ways that we can kind of look at that. Try the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 says, examine yourself. Examine yourself. Whether you be in faith, prove your own self. Know ye not your own self, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Or do you yourself not recognize that Jesus Christ is in you unless you fall or fail the test. Amen? 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 tells you, you have to examine yourself. Paul, stop looking at everybody else even before you start judging the people around you or examining the people around you. You first need to do what? I need to evaluate what's coming out of me. And what I'm allowing to come into me, I need to check myself. Amen? Amen. We came this morning to try the Spirit by the Spirit. But before we can go into it, we have to look at ourselves. So before we start anywhere, everybody out there is tuning into this message. Amen. First thing I want you to do is look in the mirror at Amen. yourself. Amen? Amen. 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 And remember, you're not looking to judge. You, you're looking to determine which spirit it, are you operating in. Which spirit is in existence and controlling the majority of your decisions? Which spirit do you fall on when trouble really comes your way? Amen. What direction do you run to? And what voice do you listen to when you really at all? with what's going on around you and you don't know what 
or how to deal with it. Amen? Examine yourself. Whether it be of faith, because in this spirit walk in God, it must be centered on faith. That faith must be a strong belief that Jesus Christ came to this earth in the flesh and dwell in the spirit in man. And his presence was felt all around him to where they saw things that they hadn't seen before. But he looked just like them. Amen. Looked just Amen. like you and I. Believe that he died, that he rose. Come on, somebody. Amen. We have to examine ourselves. What do you believe in? What's, what what you really holding yourself adhered to? To where it says or it determines who you are. Amen. Amen. In God. In God. When we go to the doctor and we tell the doctor, look, I've been hurt in my side. My doctor, my wrist been kind of messed up. The first thing the doctor do is begin to examine where we have issues at. You know? But he don't just examine where we say we have issues. He check all over us. Don't start this examination in one area and don't get to the next Amen. area. When you begin to examine yourself, examine every aspect of you, the whole totality of you. Don't just look at part of you. Be willing to look at the whole you. And don't look in a judgmental way as, a, as I'm going to judge me based on how I judge or how somebody else judged me. You judge yourself based on the word of God. You look at yourself and truly be real to yourself based on what the word says. Amen? Amen. And what the word expects and what the word communicates. How do you go into a job not expecting something? This is a job in Christ that we have committed ourselves. We are part of his army. How do we get into this walk and not expect certain things to occur? Or, or be in a position to do certain things Amen. that he has given us. Amen? Remember, the doctor examines not only where you complain that, but most in all cases, he put that thing on your back until you call. He put that thing on your chest until you call. He feel around on your side. He feel around on his side. He began to check your arms. He, he checked all over you. Amen. He put that little thing in your ear to see what's down in there. Look in your eyes. Why? Because he's examined the whole body of you. Don't just look at your feet that's walking. Look at your hands that's touching. Look at your mouth that's speaking. Look at your eyes that's seeing. Examine your ears that's here. Amen. What are we Amen. doing to truly identify with what we gravitate to the most? Amen. Verse 2 says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Know for a certainty that God has determined certain things for you to know. That this is of me. Amen. This connects you and lines you up with right relationship with me. When we openly confess that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh, is of God. The devil will never tell you who Jesus really was. The devil will really never tell you how Jesus really came and what he really came to do. That's not his assignment. He's not going to, he's going to challenge you based on what you have came up with. If you haven't came up with it, he's not going to give it to you so you can figure out, oh no, that's what they've been talking about. No, Satan don't want to give you a revelation about Christ. He won't take your revelation away. Amen? Your daily walk is what assists you on knowing yourself and your commitment. 
What do you do daily? What are we doing every day that says, I love the Lord? What am I doing every day that tells me that I'm walking right in God? What am I doing to research every day to make me know a little bit more about God and a little bit more about myself? How am I studying Jesus to see even more who I am and whose I am? Amen. What am I doing to look at myself and really evaluate myself to make me know how to deal with me a whole lot better Amen. than maybe I've done before? Amen? This is what the Word is saying. Your daily walk is what assists you on knowing yourself. What am I doing every second or almost the majority of the time that I'm moving about this earth? Amen? Amen. So if a, if a day to God is as a thousand years, then my daily walk is not just talking about this moment, this second, this hour, but it's talking about my progress or my, my procession that have moved from childhood to adulthood to old age. What am I doing in this walk that makes me understand my commitment to right relationship with God? What am I doing? How am I doing? Verse 3 says, And every spirit that confesses, not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Amen. Amen? Do you hear that? The devil is not going to tell you that Jesus is real. Amen. The devil is not going to tell you that his word is real. The devil is not going to tell you that what you're saying that's not of God is what you shouldn't be saying. The devil is going to tell you keep that up. Keep it going, buddy. Stay right on point. I like that. That's it. By the fact, the devil is going to tell you amen. amen. The devil is going to give you a shallow corner. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got some people that'll hang with you, that'll be with you when you got something going on, and they'll never challenge you based on whether you're right or wrong. Because they don't want to upset you. They want to continue to splurge with you and celebrate with you. They'll never stand up and just tell you the truth because they don't want you to turn away from them. That's how Satan is. You know, you go to the party, you got the money, you don't got paid. Your partner says, man, I don't get paid. And they say, come on, man, I got you. You get to the bar and he start ordering like he's spinning out your pocket. You got him though, right? You got him. Because you told him from the jump, I got you. So you know you came with a pocket full. He's spinning out your pocket. He's spinning out your pocket. Finally, you say it's time to go. I, I ended up, I looked at it, I didn't spend it. I only bought me a little bit. Man, this man spent all of my money. Now the next week come. And y'all ready to do the same. He done got his money. He said, man, I can't go out tonight. <laughs> See, that's that game that Satan trade would play with us. See, it's not about changing him. It's about getting you to fail. So if he's going to come right along with you and amen you and salute you and pat you on the back and get you going in the direction that's opposite of God, and then when it's time for him to pay back, he's going to look at you and say, that was on you, man. I ain't got time to waste like that. I'm not mm. gonna reward you. Mm. No. But I tell you what I do. And then somebody pass by that ain't got no good in their heart. And he'll make you become who he was to you to them. You'll begin to walk with them and they'll say, come on, buddy, I got you. But you don't know their heart's intent. Like you know your own. Amen. You went out there with a good spirit just to celebrate and have fun. Now you done jumped in their bandwagon and you don't really know that in their mind when all this is said and done, God, we're going to go do something that it's going to take a man to do. We're going to take some. We're going to do some. We're going to mess up some. We're going to cut up. To me, having fun is no limits. To me, enjoying myself is no roadblocks, no ceilings. The sky's the limit. Everything we want to do is good to do. Whether good or bad, 
See, Satan can play with both of them. He can play around with the good, but his whole intent is to turn the good into bad. Amen? Amen. And don't you know that Satan's biggest work is what he gets us to do in us to accomplish his mission mm -hmm. in somebody else? Amen? Amen. That's Satan. That's Satan. Matthew 7 and 16. Go there for a minute. He said, by their fruits, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? No. Grapes are on a vine, and there's nothing to interfere with you picking them. There's no pain, there's no struggle. There's really no struggle. They're just sitting right there for you to get. Right? But roses are on thorn bushes. All of that beauty, you got to maneuver your way or get stuck while you plucking the rose. Amen? Amen. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Fruit, by their fruit. Fruit is a product that, that comes from what they are. Fruit is something that is grown up out of the stem that extends from the tree. And in that stem, the plant was down on the inside. Now, here's the fruit. The fruit is an independent source from the tree. It becomes independent. Amen. Amen. But it's either going to be bitter or sweet. Let me tell you something that's so awesome that God revealed to me that any fruit picked at the wrong time mm -hmm. can be bitter. Any fruit that's called into existence or called into demand at an improper time will be bitter and uneatable or unedible, right? But when you catch that fruit at the right moment, and only God can give you the right moment. Amen. See, too many times we're trying to go out there and pick our fruits. Too many times we're looking at somebody else and we're trying to determine them based on what we see, and it might not be the right moment. Based on what they do and what they did, we we judging them and we holding them back. We put we put nails in their coffin and they're not even dead because they made a mistake. They did this at that time. Everything was out of order. But for the one that's picking the fruit, for the one that's looking at the tree, you have to first look at yourself. You got to first examine yourself. And then ask God, tell me which one to observe, which stage to observe, because it's always an opportunity to serve. That's what Christ came to do. When we open up our eyes and look at the story of Jesus, he didn't go to those that said they was healed. He went to the ones that were sick. The ones that were sick are the fruit that don't look good. That Satan is interfering with, that Satan is confusing, that Satan is causing to drift and fall, that Satan has begun to make them believe that they ain't no good and never will be good. The fruit that come from the tree is only a fruit that have adopted the ways of the tree. But if we remember, there was two trees in the garden. Amen. One that he told us not to eat from, and one that was the tree of life. Jesus have came to give it up, to give a fallen, a bad, a messed up tree. Has came to give his fruit an opportunity to get back in touch with the tree of life. Seven ways to test a false teacher. Their confession of Jesus, they're not going to do. 
Their relationship with the world, they love it. And you are not here to love this world. How they receive Christianity, I'm going to take it a step further. How they receive the word of God, how they receive relationship in God, how they receive the teaching of God, amen? That teaching may take different forms, different nationalities, amen? The attitudes toward the commandments of God, do they care about them or do they disregard them? Those commandments that God gave us down through Moses and then came back and gave us Jesus, the writings that's in the book of Leviticus that talks to us about the laws. Amen? Love of their brothers, you don't give up on anybody. You gotta take them for who they are. And if you see some faults, pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them and pick them up. To continue to encourage them. Amen. 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 Not to tear them down, but to continue to encourage them. Beloved, let us love one another. In verse 7 of the fourth chapter. Let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. You got to accept him. And when you accept him, you got to begin the process of change. You got to allow him to begin the process of change. You're not going to change on your own. Uh -huh. You're not going to change. You like what you're doing. What are you going to change for? I just don't like getting caught. I like what I'm doing. I like it the way I'm doing it. Because I'm slick, I'm cool, I'm cunning. Who that sound like? I'm manipulating and it's working. Who it sound like? Yeah. Hmm. Come on, church. Amen. Come on, church. We have a responsibility to duplicate something that's bigger than each one of us. Amen. Verse 4 says, Ye are of God's little children and have overcome them. Because great is he that is in you. What? If we take our eyes off of ourselves and off others and start looking at the one that's on the inside of us, man, how much greater would it be? Verse 5 says, They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Stop. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Those are two different spirits, right? One of them takes you to right relationship with God. One of them takes you away from God. Amen. Amen. No is our key word today. No. 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 As it's related to our relationship with God. The good shepherd. In John 1 and 47, John 1 and 47, Nathaniel had a clean spirit. He said, can anybody, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel asked, come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said, true Israelite in whom there is no deceit. They think it was good because deceit had been taken away from him. The one thing he wasn't going to do is try to deceive you. He was going to be honest with you and open with you and truthful to you. Amen? Amen? That's one of the attributes that we need to apply to our walk in God. We need to become as less deceitful as we can be. Matter of fact, we need to work on be, be, being non-deceitful. Amen? Amen? But you got to do it at the course that God take you at. Don't set up and tell a lie. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Amen? And he 
here's something that really just spoke to me. A broken spirit is usually good. I challenged that at one time. Broken spirit is damaging. To me, it's broken. They have been through so much, been abused, been victimized, been troubled, been tore up, busted up, messed up, amen? See, broken spirit is a good spirit. Use them. Go to Psalms 51. I know we all remember the phrase in, or the scripture in Psalm that says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Amen. And renew the right spirit within me. Where does that spirit come from? What do we ask God to create in us a clean heart from? Because we know. We know. We messed up. We know. We've done some things that, man, that just beat up on us. We know. We know. Amen. So we cry out to God to create in us a clean heart. Oh God, and renew the right spirit within us. Amen. Now, in God coming and doing that, does that mean that other spirit not going to still challenge you? No. But he replaced that right spirit in you. But you have to gravitate to it. Amen. Ain't that right? Amen. So look at this right here. What makes a broken spirit? A good spirit. Let's look at the word. Verse 16 says, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. You have came into the biggest battle amongst yourself because now I recognize I'm tore up from the flow up. And God says, I can do a new thing in you. Because he said, where we are weak, God is made strong. Where you weak, God is strong. That's when God began to show up more in your life Begin to encourage you, begin to pick you up, begin to boost you up, begin to give you things that you didn't have, but you got to know how to appreciate it, and you got to be thankful for what he has done and Amen. what he's doing. Amen? Amen? Don't let the devil make you see it as something small when really God has done something mm -hmm. big. Amen. The simplest thing ought to be appreciated Amen. from those that know God. Amen? And know what they was going through. I remember when I was at my lowest. I remember God doing some things in my life. And that little small simple thing. I saw. It. And I said thank you Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it only got better. Better. Well I assumed that it was going to get worse. It only got better. I was expecting for things to get worse. It just got better. Better. Now it was a fire. It was a burning. It was something that I had to go through. But it got better. And better. And the only time it gets challenging is when I do something opposite of what God wants me to do. When I began to deviate what He's done, what He's told me and start doing my own thing because I want to do it my way. I want to go out there and make it happen my way. A faithful spirit is a good spirit. That means I'm not giving up. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm not bowing down. I'm not quitting. I believe. I believe. I believe. That's my chant. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. That's all. I believe. A good spirit cannot always be detected on the outside. Or by the outward appearance. But it's something about that good spirit that reigns, that make you draw to it, that make you know Amen. there's something deeper to this person. Ain't that right? Amen. That's why God gave us the gift of concern, of, of, of discernment. Amen. Amen. To help us see 
when we fall to that. Help us see what spirit is amongst us. What is of good or something we need to be tested by. Amen. Or we need to test to make certain that we're not allowing ourselves to falter because of what it is. Let it get too close to us, but really, we need to keep ourselves away from it. Amen. 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 Christ speaks of unclean spirits as well. Christ speaks of devil spirits, wicked spirits, dumb spirits, talented spirits, foul spirits, spirits of infirmity. He speaks of other kind of spirits as well. Paul reflects those spirits, deviation, bondage, slumber, the world, disobedience, seducing spirits, and fear spirits. God is trying to tell us that in us, we have everything that we need to make this walk right, to make this walk better. In us, God has equipped us, but it starts one in one place. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is the one. Confess with your mouth that he was born to a woman. Confess with your mouth that he came to this earth to build our relationship with God. God. It starts right there. If you can't do that, how do you expect for a God that you don't surrender to to really look good to you? That's insanity. But he's always doing good for you. But you don't see it. Testing the spirit means that you have to use a spiritual test to test a spiritual demon. You're going to use the flesh to test a spiritual devil when that's where he dwells. The flesh is his domain. To test the spirit, you need doctrinal, doctrinal test. Man, you need the doctrine of God, mm -hmm. the word of God, word of God. the truth of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then you need fruit by that. What kind of fruit do you bear? Amen. What type of fruit do you bear? Come on, church. Go to Ephesians 5 and 18. Ephesians 5 and 18. The enemy is out to do battle with you. Amen, church? Amen. He's been doing it since day one. Our looks have changed, but it's the same spirit. Ephesians 5 and 18 speaks like this. And be not drunk with wine, for in is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. There's another version that reads like this. Therefore, uh, there are many, many spirits, but only one Holy Spirit. And God.